One of the applications for the second derivative is to determine uh, intervals where a function is concave up, concave upward, and where it's concave downward. So I'm going to show you on this function how we can use the second derivative to locate those intervals. So what we need to do is find the second derivative and then we're going to find the intervals where the second derivative is positive and that will tell us where the function is concave upward and the places where the second derivative is negative uh, will tell us where the function is concave downward. And to do that we'll go ahead and take a couple derivatives here. Uh, I'm going to rewrite the function itself as a power rather than a radical just because it's easier for me to use the power rule to do these derivatives. So the first derivative we're going to bring that one third down, multiply by 13 and get 13 thirds and then we subtract one and get negative two thirds for the exponent and with the second derivative which is the one we're looking for I'll put that in blue multiply by negative two thirds and you get negative 26 ninths x to the negative five thirds okay and then let me go ahead and rewrite this in radical form it's a little easier to analyze that way this fraction would be negative 26 over 9 times the cube root of x to the fifth that's what this exponent means the power gets moved to the denominator because of the negative sign and it is a 5 thirds fraction which is the cube root of x to the fifth so once we've identified the second derivative we need to find places where the second derivative is either zero or undefined kind of like critical points for the first derivative uh, a fraction will never equal zero when the numerator is not zero so we have a numerator of negative 26 meaning that we're never going to have any zeros for this particular function however if we plug zero in for x in the denominator this function is undefined and so this is going to be our point of interest here that's going to be the point that we use to divide up our interval our domain so we have the second derivative and we know that the function is undefined at x equals zero so we're going to make a sine diagram and the sine diagram is basically a number line where we partition it with our points that we found we had no zeros we only had this undefined point x equals zero and what we're going to do is we're going to plug in a value from each of these intervals say on the positive side we could use the value one it's an easy number to work with and on the negative side we can use negative one you can choose any value you want but it makes sense to choose a number that's easy to work with once we determine the sign of our second derivative when we plug one in we will know the signs of the second derivative for all the numbers on the positive side and similarly when we plug negative one in we determine the sign of the second derivative we'll know the signs of all the values that are negative so uh, let's start with the negative side we'll plug in negative one when you plug in negative one to this crazy function you basically get negative 26 divided by negative 9. The cube root of negative 1 to the fifth is negative 1. And so we get negative 26 over negative 9, which is a positive value. So for my sine diagram, I'm actually going to indicate that on this side of the number line, the second derivative is always positive. When the second derivative is positive, our function's concave up meaning it's curving with this shape, kind of like a smiley face. And that interval will be written as negative infinity to zero. When I plug a positive one in for x, I get negative 26 over 9, which is a negative value. That indicates to me that all of these second derivative signs are going to be negative for the numbers greater than zero, meaning that this side of the function is going to be concave down, and it has a shape kind of like a frown and that interval is zero to positive infinity 
So we've used the second derivative to make a sine diagram and identify the intervals where a function is concave up and where it's concave down. Once you identify those intervals, you only need to test one point in the interval. We know it wouldn't be changing, otherwise we'd find other zeros or undefined values. So this function is concave up from negative infinity to zero and concave down from zero to infinity. Good luck.